applies. In Hold'em, if you make a mistake, you just yeah, don't say anything. Like, the etiquette's basically you don't say anything, and then hey, if, Eric, if you, you let the mistakes slide. In PLO, there, be, there is kind of a gentleman's agreement in the mid-stakes where you just show your cards, and if anybody catches who the winner is, it's basically verbally said. Yep. And um, cards speak, whereas Hold'em, um, you got to watch out for yourself. If you can't see that you had winner and you muck your hand, then that's your fault. Well, cards still speak and hold them Cards as well. still speak, but people cards will muck their casinos. hands. Yeah. Like, um, out here, commonly, like I would say happens at least five times a week when I'm propping. Like, people will flip over the winning hand and then muck their hand. And legally, by the rules, the other guy wins the pot because the other guy mucked the hand, even though he showed winner. Uh... No. If you table the winning hand and then the cards hit the muck, I'm pretty sure you still win. If, well, if you can not. call cameras and the, and the cards were on their back outside of the muck and you had the winning hand, it's it's a winning hand by rule. I haven't seen that around here. I will prop bet that's the rule here if you want. If they show the hand and then... If the then hand is tabled and visible to the cameras okay. and is then thrown in the muck, yeah. it is still awarded the pot if you call and they go check the cameras. We have a bet here from Melody. He flops the nuts. And Eric flops top and bottom pair. And so this could be a bit of an action pot here. Get a club too. Uh -huh. <coughs> and Eric's going to raise the flop with two pair. And that's what you look like if you're DJ Melody and you have the nuts and you have just been raised. You knew he had kings? I no, yours I, is probably I thought he had a better jack. It's kind of the same shit. I can see everything. Chad is in just as much disagreement as we are. No, no, no. I, I, I was waiting for the hand to finish, but I'm going to follow up on. A call you're, here. You're right, but I'm just I'm talking about more the etiquette of the situations. And the turn is a king of clubs. Yeah, there aren't too many kings. <laughs> no worries. I don't know. There's, there's other, there's bigger meals to that deeply munch on over here. Eric, still with two pair. One extra straight gets there. A few higher two pairs come in. And Eric sizes a bit down after the flop raise. Slightly under half pot here. Melody now with the second nuts on a very draw-heavy board. Imagine this is the kind of board with his stack size in this pot that you might want to put in a raise or a shove here. Uh, your hand needs protection, and that's what he does. That he does is protection. Shove. Oh, okay. And that's not to say that you can't call with this hand and continue to slow play it. You are in position, which makes it a reasonable candidate. But there are so many draws out there that you're actually going to want to find some semi-bluffs on a board like this. And Queen-9 is a great hand to jam in to have some value jams as well. It's been like months since I got one on you like that. You just said Nick Eric. Oh, that has. Oh yeah. It's been a while since I bluffed you and it worked. I'm fine with that. And Eric, deep in the tank here. It's not an easy spot. No, not at all. It's a question of if you think Melody has enough of those semi-bluffs. Uh, and this is, again, why it's important to include those semi-bluffs into your strategy. Is If you don't have semi-bluff jams in the spot, especially if you play on stream or you play with the same people over and over again, and they pick up on that, they can consider making big folds. And Jack-8 is certainly a reasonable hand to fold if you don't think your opponent 
has those bluffs in them or doesn't have enough of them in them. Eric does make the call. Drawing to four outs. That's not it. So to follow up on the conversation earlier, Dan is 100% correct. If the hand is tabled, then it speaks. The problem is if the guy mucks his hand, the etiquette that has been going on in the mid-stakes is that the pot will be awarded to the other guy and other people don't speak about the hand. The, uh, the person who tabled their hand has to defend themselves. Right. If they call a floor, I was saying... Yeah, if they call the floor, yeah, you're absolutely right. Their legally the winning hand. Yes. And they could get a ruling. If they went for a ruling, they're going to win the hand. Yes, they are going to win the hand. But just around five times a week, I would see that happen. And then our etiquette is that we pretty much agree that nobody says anything. You have to defend yourself and, and hold them. But in PLO, it's mid-stakes, at least, cards speak. Like, if anybody sees the winning, whoever sees what the correct winning hand is, then that person is awarded and everyone speaks up. Fair enough. I can tell a fun quick aside as we're finishing out our show about uh, when I was 21 and had no idea what any of these etiquettes were. I was playing a uh, 5,000 PLO game. I might have been 22, I guess, at this point. So that was yesterday. Um, <laughs> and it was in the Bahamas, and there was a 100K pot that went down where one player was all in for 10k and the other two players were all in for 45k each okay and so there's a huge side pot right. and a main pot yeah and the player who was only in for 10k shows the nuts on the river Ooh. and the player in for 45k is sitting next to me with the second nuts oh my god and he's shaking his head and has his hand basically tabled but not quite showing it to me showing it to the guy next to him how unlucky he is oh my god and goes to muck and I wow. stopped him. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. And I told him, y y y there's a side pot. Like, so what's that again there? I I mean, who the hell knows, man? Like, it, wasn't a, it was in the Bahamas during, like, a random uh, Poker Stars tournament. Oh, my gosh. Series. Yeah. And so, like, it's, it's not a set of regulars who all have some sort of a custom agreement. Right, Still right. looking back to it this day, I don't really know exactly. Yeah, because I've played in games where that's considered totally normal, and I've played in games where that's right. considered totally not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the etiquette, like here, that's what kind of happens. Um, no, obviously, we all have to protect drink. ourselves. In general, you don't want to stick you your head you into certain circumstances because you're going to really piss off the third guy. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Yeah, so. obviously. Yeah. And actually, it turned out a few of the people at the table were sharing action. So that's sort of shady oh, on their part. Oh, wow. Multiple yeah. people sort of exploded at me at the time. Yeah. Um, although that makes me then no, feel less cool. like I did anything I? wrong if, like, multiple people start yelling at me because they're sharing action. Oh, yeah. I, I actually feel better about my decision because, I know. I don't know the answer either. Yeah. Like, that, it's like when you're a regular at, you know, high stakes commerce, you know everybody – in general, you kind of know what's going on. Like, you know, here at the bike, I know what's going on. Live at the bike, generally, we play with a lot of the same people. We know what's going on. But when you're with strangers, man. Yeah. But the thing is, like, was he your friend, the guy that you protected? Uh, we had been friendly on that trip, but I had not known him before, like, three days prior. Well, okay. Then, um, then that's your call. Like, I would say that if it's your friend, I mean, you, you can't. You can't not do it, right? <laughs> like, the the guy sharing action are going to try to protect know, their right? friends, too. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was... I mean, again, I had no... Like, I had just never... I had never, like, considered that it couldn't be right. I came from an online background. Where, yeah, like, right, right. I, I had no idea how even live poker really worked at the time. And had never seen a situation like that before. And was, like, very surprised. Yeah. I had even had to think... I hadn't even thought about the situation at the time. Um, um, everyone thinks so, you know that you just automatically know these things, but you don't. You learn yeah, a lot of these etiquette things and how people think about it by having an experience. Right, um, right. No one teaches you this when you first and, start playing. And there's just a learning curve too. Like you go through like X things and then you learn. Like even if you're told certain things, like I mean, you use your eyes to like kind of judge, um, you know, what's right in the long run. Because you could be told the wrong information too. Yep. 